2023 census is about us. Every single one of us. Kia ora, I'm Tom Kitchen and today on The Detail... The census is a survey of all of us here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. That's right, the census is coming up on March the 7th. It counts every person in the country and the places where we live or stay. It also helps plan healthcare services, where to build schools, houses and plot public transport routes. In the 2023 census, for the first time, we're going to be asked about things like sexuality, gender and sex characteristics. So it's going to be um, really wonderful to fill that out and feel able to show your full self. But the last census, the first time it was online, didn't go so well. The census, as we're all well aware by now, was a debacle. One in seven people didn't fill in their forms. Statistics New Zealand says it has had to delay the release of any information as it reckons with a lower than expected response. Tens of thousands of households, many of whom are poor, many of whom are Māori or Pacific Island, will mean that those people don't really necessarily get the funding that they should. There were failures in the governance, strategic leadership, structure and culture of the census operation. The census was not executed according to the plan. So what's the plan for avoiding a repeat? The 2023 census will get an extra $110 million, twice as many boots on the ground to collect the data, and lots of paper forms will be delivered, up from just 3% last time to cover nearly half the population. Newsroom journalist David Williams has written extensively about the census and what went down last time. Let's think back to 2018, the last census. That was a disaster, was it? (laughs) Uh, It's certainly been described as such. I was looking back through some of the stories and um, botched is the favourite word, I think. The census has been botched effectively. The Māori Council is calling for a rerun of the botched 2018 census. The census botch up may have done long-lasting damage to public trust, with one economist warning it could take as long as a decade to rebuild. So, yeah, it wasn't great. In fact, it was terrible enough that the chief statistician, Liz McPherson, lost her job after a review. This morning I am releasing the findings of the independent review into the 2018 census. As well as releasing the findings of the review, I am also announcing my decision to resign as government statistician and chief executive. I want to publicly apologise for what went wrong in the 2018 census. I am truly sorry. People uh, couldn't get their forms, they couldn't reach the call centre, Uh, A lot of houses weren't visited and it led to a a massive undercount in the population at large, but also in in the important populations of Māori and Pacifica. Stats New Zealand has had to use data from other places to fill the gaps caused by an extremely low turnout for Māori. For Census 2018, it was just 68%. The key purpose of a census, which makes it different from any other kind of counting exercise, is that it's meant to count the whole national population. So if you miss 30% of a group, that's terrible. That's Tahu Kukutai, a professor at the University of Waikato and currently chairs Te Mana Raronga, or the Māori Data Sovereignty Group. She also worked on the independent review of the 2018 census. There were a whole bunch of people who didn't get codes and then also people who didn't know what to do once they got the codes. And then there was also those who just who got their forms physically delivered but didn't return them for whatever reason. So there, it wasn't it wasn't like one smoking bullet. <laughs> there were a whole bunch of critical steps that didn't get taken, and then that sort of resulted in, and produced that end result. And that disproportionately affected Maori and uh, Pacific households, which is which is unsurprising. It affected some areas more than others, so you had lower response rates in particular areas, even within Tamaki Makoto. It didn't affect the population evenly. We'll return to Tahu a bit later in the podcast, but now back to David Williams. Did New Zealand get ahead of itself running the census almost entirely online? Um, the review certainly said there was a big focus online, and I think they the, the review was quite clear that they thought that the digital first thing was important, and but they seemed to be more worried about getting the back-end systems right. And they were worried about a breach of privacy, which had happened recently in Australia. There was a large-scale denial-of-service attempt on the census website and online form. A denial-of-service is an attempt to block 
people from accessing a website. And the focus perhaps was not as much on that on-the-ground stuff and that was much to their detriment. What are Stats New Zealand trying to do to improve the census for this year? Well, they've done a lot, really. Um, They've consulted widely on what they can do better, Um, and particularly in Māori and Pacifica communities, uh, they've gone into those communities, they've uh, certainly employed people from within those communities, and they're going to trial uh, iwi-led data collection. Um, And so that seems a very good step. Uh, They also uh, had a a partnership with, uh, there's a data iwi leaders group, um, so there is a, a, a more rigorous focus on, on those communities. And the undercounts were quite large in the 2018 census, and so they're trying to shore up that support. And it will be interesting because the when you've been burned once, I guess, uh, people might think, well, why do I have to do this? Or why should I trust people to get this right? And so I think in a way this is the the chance for the census to restore trust. It will be very interesting to see how the public reacts. The cost of 2023 compared to before, it's much more expensive this year, is it? Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's um, based on those er budgets in early last year. Um, The overall budget was $251 million. The last census cost $126 million. And so in this financial year, the year that the census will be delivered, it is as costly, if not, I think it's slightly more costly than the entire last census. So it's going to cost us more this year than it did for the entire last census, which is a, a five-year cycle. So very much more costly. This year's census is expected to cost almost $260 million. Stats NZ says part of the reason for that is they're using more paper, they've got more accessible formats, and they'll have more collectors out visiting people. There's also inflation and rising labour costs. But Stats NZ is also promising to work more closely with communities across the country, especially Māori. And that will be crucial to avoiding a repeat of what happened in 2018. Here's Tahu Kukutai again. One of the casualties of the 2018 census going wrong is that there was no official iwi data that could be released so what you know so what happened is when you end up with a big you know like a 30 percent of the population missing and then the next step was to try and fix that to try and backfill the census data set with other government data and and that kind of works for some variables for some parts of the data set and it doesn't really work for other parts of the data set and one of the parts of the data set where it doesn't work well is iwi data And the reason for that is that iwi affiliation is not reliably and comprehensively collected um, across the population in any other data capture apart from the census. So if that goes wrong, uh, it has really profound implications for iwi data. The official statistics uh, won't be released. Uh, for iwi uh, this coming term, that could put in jeopardy a whole a whole host of things. And so, even with you know, even with a lot of effort put in after the fact, including a lot of effort from technicians from the um, National iwi Chairs Forum Data iwi Leadership Group, and I was helping to assist um, on that. Even with a lot of time and effort put into it, you can only do so much to try and improve the quality um, of the data. At the, at the end of it, um, we sort of ended up with estimated iwi counts, not official iwi counts, because there was no way to really remedy it. What what is uh, iwi data used for generally? Oh, it's used for a whole range of purposes. I mean, even if you think of something basic, like if you go back to the first principles of the census, why would any government in the world want to undertake a census? Well, they want to know how many people they have in their population at any given time. And then once you know the amount of people, you want to know, well, what are their characteristics? You know, what is the age, sex structure? Um, you know, how many people are in the labour market, what's the level of education, all that all that critical information that you need to understand your people, to plan properly, to deliver services, all of that information is critical for any government. And it's critical for iwi. I mean, if iwi want to meet the needs of their people, they need to be able to answer, you know, basic questions like, you know, how many people do we have? Where do they live? What does the educational profile look like? 
what might we look like 20 years down the track, you know? So that relying on high quality, accurate, timely information, it's really crucial. And so when it goes wrong, there's there's a whole, it has really profound implications. Now those statistics, they inform uh, things like treaty settlements. They inform uh, things like education uh, and the spend, not only for the government spend, but for the EV spend as well. Is there any alternative for the census? Well, I mean, I guess the thing is with the 2018 census, it, it showed that, that actually the opportunity is to try and move towards something that's a, an alternative approach rather than relying solely on Stats New Zealand to collect Māori and iwi data. And so one of the things that's come out with the 2023 census is a pilot project that's been run through the Data Iwi Leadership Group that's sort of trialling um, iwi-based data collection. And so building, you know, iwi-based capacity and capability to undertake data collection, I think that's been a real positive initiative. One of the other initiatives has been um, the establishment of the Te Whata iwi data platform. The iwi leaders group is working with the government on a bespoke data platform called Te Whata to break down tribal statistics. The data ecosystem is more responsive to us and there are decisions that are made about us and then there are decisions that are made by us. All statistics agencies around the world are facing challenges when it comes to traditional census taking. So many of them are looking for alternative models And as they're moving towards this process of census transformation, it's a really good opportunity to look at, well, to actually do a bit of a rethink. And maybe we shouldn't be collecting all of this Māori data by government. Maybe we need to look at sort of a more combined hybrid approach where iwi and Māori organisations collect some data, uh, the government collects other sorts of data where it makes sense to, and we just have a much more um, sort of innovative and decentralised uh, approach to data collection. Um, and the shift really is towards moving away from this sort of traditional census to one which is purely administrative, like in the Netherlands, for example. So, you know, there they have a virtual census. They don't undertake a traditional census as we know it. It's all generated from administrative government data that's repurposed for the census. So that's a direction of travel here in Aotearoa, is to move towards a purely administrative system. Um, and we think about, you know, we're, we're 30 years down the track of uh, iwi settlements. Um, most iwi, um, not all, but most iwi now have their own iwi registers. They have their own criteria for belonging to an iwi and for becoming registered. So in some ways, it would make a lot more sense for iwi to hold the data on iwi affiliation because they already have it. And for that to be, you know, combined with some of the other data that government um, already collects in a way that maintains trust, maintains privacy and maintains integrity, but gives you a better quality data set at the end of the day. For a long time, there's been real dissatisfaction with the way in which data has been collected, the way that it was being used and and often weaponised, the lack of access to data. And so data sovereignty you know, became, I guess, a catch cry for really trying to disrupt the way that that, that data was being collected and used and shared with very little Māori input or consent or, or any benefit at the end of the day. So Yeah, you talk about consent and benefit. Uh, you also talk about weaponising as well. How was data used um, in that space? You know, if you kind of cast your mind back to before 1986, you know, the, the the measure that was used in the census to sort of classify people was degree of blood. It was blood quantum, you know. And I, I remember in our household, um, you know, my mum and dad would, would, you know, would be looking at the census form where you had to sort of quantify the degree of Māori blood of your, of your tamariki. And it was just outrageous and it was so racist and it was just sort of a, a legacy of this sort of Victorian concept of sort of biological race. So there's a whole long and sorry history of data collection and Māori data being used in ways that didn't benefit Māori and and, and oftentimes created all sorts of, of harm and problems. What happens if the return rates are low again or even lower? Well, I, I guess that's where 
a government might look at what they're doing and say we need to do it differently. The way that they supplemented the last census because of the lower rate of return was through something they call administrative data. And so that's stats to, collected for another purpose that is essentially anonymised and repurposed so that the data that comes out of the census can be good enough uh, to get the answers that we need. And so it may be that they rely on those other data sources, um, these regular surveys they do for other things or data collection that's anonymised and, and protects people's privacy uh, to supplement what they're doing. Um, so I guess that's the danger. If people um, aren't participating in the census and the data isn't as good as it should be, then maybe they'll start to rethink the wisdom of doing it, which um, would be a bit of a shame. Well, census is so important in terms of populations and making those decisions, as you say. I mean, how worse off do you think we'd be without a census? Well, it, we need something like this, don't we? And the ideal is a census every five years just does the job. So I don't think anything else uh, would be as good. Uh, unfortunately, but if a government was forced into a position to make some decisions, then it would have to come up with something else and it's probably not going to be as good. Uh, so we would be worse off because those decisions, you know, down to councils making decisions about growing suburbs and where they put libraries or pools or um, where they want to make parks, um, make them bigger or, or whatever it is. Um, these are really important decisions that affect everyone in neighbourhoods all over New Zealand. So uh, it would be a shame if we had poor data and those decisions were, were poor again. And, and it, again, it just it's that endless cycle, isn't it, where it erodes public trust in institutions. Um, but if we all you know, do our bit, we're all publicly minded, put our hand on our head and say, all right, let's go, let's go and do this, it actually helps. It actually helps people who we elect to make better decisions. Yeah, well, sell the census to me, David. I mean, why should we care? I mean, some people just think it's, you know, really boring. And there's also that anti-government sentiment, obviously, as well, after the protests last year. So people might be less inclined to do it. Well, I, I guess that, that is an argument. In fact, that's an argument that Statistics New Zealand made to the minister last year. They said that there, there is an element of that and, and realistically that may mean a lower turnout in some areas. But I think a lot of people, the majority of people are public minded and actually the data is used for pretty important things. If you see a, a growth spike in a certain area, you might decide as a government or as a ministry that, oh, hang on, we need, we're seeing so much growth in that area based on the projections forward we need to start thinking about building a school. So decisions to buy land for a school, for example, by the Ministry of Education. Or if you see a lot of older people um, by uh, population in a certain area, you might want to think about healthcare services. Uh, and and uh, private investors, people who, who build and run retirement villages or rest homes, they might look at a population and say, well, I think there's going to be great demand for this. And that's something that we need to think about. Uh, so these are, these are really important decisions. And without good data, uh, the decisions won't be as good. 2023, do you have faith that it's going to work? Oh, look, to be fair to Stats New Zealand, I think they've, um, they've you know, they increased the budget. They've got a lot more field workers on the ground. Um, they've got the pilot every data collection. Um, so they've got a whole lot of things in place. And I think they've taken on board a lot of the lessons that they learned from 2018. So, you know, from that perspective, I think that looks really positive. Um, I guess, on the other hand, you know, a lot has changed since 2018. We've had the pandemic. We've got a real crisis of misinformation and disinformation. There's sort of social cleavages that have become so much more visible now than sort of pre-pandemic. And, you know, that that could well have an impact on census taking, even with the best efforts. So I don't have a crystal ball, but what I do know is that you know, governments around the world are facing real challenges when it comes to census taking. And so, you know, the twilight of the census could be nigh, um, and that doesn't mean there will no longer be a census. It just means it will look probably very different in the future than what it does now. That's it for today. I'm Tom Kitchen. The detail is supported by the Public Interest Journalism Fund. This episode was engineered by Jeremy Ansell, and our producers are Sarah Robson and Bonnie Harrison. Thanks to David Williams and Tahu Kukutai. Ka kite anō.